Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the hourly chart of Glencore PLC. And uh, you can see I've drawn in some trend lines here, the beginning downtrend, and then the sharper decrease. And then you can see the kind of death downtrend that was broken out by what I will say, in my opinion, was massive short covering in here. You can see with the volume there that uh, probably most of the shorts got out at an enormous profit. But uh, this is starting to look like a dead cat bounce here. And uh, with the news that came out of China today, we're, we're turning back down. This story is not over yet. Now, what's interesting is if we go over and look at the, the Finviz futures chart for copper, if you remember... Uh, Glencore was trying to prop up the copper market, in my opinion. That's what they tried to do because you can see that uh, right when the issue started to hit, we got kind of a fake rally in copper. And now it's turning down because the news out of China is so bad that uh, uh, there's just nothing to support the price. So I'm definitely expecting new lows. I predicted before that this will be cut in half from here. Of course, that's going to mean bankruptcy for Glencore. And, you know, to think about the kind of assets that we're talking about, I want to play you a little bit of uh, the latest from Simon Black. This is called The uh, U.S. Government is Really Bankrupt. Here's proof. And uh, it's a good uh, lecture. He takes the long-term view and talks about all the empires that have come and gone and, and how they get into the situation they're in. And, and uh, so it's a really good listen for, for various other reasons. But the one I want to concentrate on here is this idea of having assets in the ground. And that's such a big assumption. Now, he's talking about the situation where um, people are going to count, well, what about all the, what about all the natural uh, resources that the U.S. has that aren't those worth trillions and trillions and trillions, and a lot of people have speculated about that. But you know, th those aren't really assets. Whether it's precious metals or whether it's base metals or whether it's oil or something else, it's in the ground. Uh, that's a very dubious idea to count that as assets. So let's listen to what Simon has to say about that, and then I'm going to talk about Glencore. Then we're going to get to the main story which is about uh, the madness at the mint. So let's play this. When it ends up, when using it ends up costing you money, you know, how much are your pie in the sky ideas about how much oil you may or may not have in the ground and how expensive it may or may not be to pull it out of the ground brought to you by the people that spent, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars on a stupid website. Sorry, not hundreds of billions of dollars, a couple of billion dollars. I think the, the last tally I saw was something like two and a half billion dollars on the Obamacare website. I mean, come on. And the, these guys are, are going to magically pull out all this oil and coal and, 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 and natural gas and, and, and silver and copper and molybdenum and whatever else out of the ground and run a profit. Run, they're going to run such a tight ship. It's all going to be so profitable. And oh, yeah, they own it all. I mean, come on. What is that? That's just kind of pie-in-the-sky thinking. But if you want to go ahead and say, yeah, sure, that's positive. That's a, that's a positive number on the balance sheet. So right now, remember, where their, their own numbers say negative $18 trillion. So he's going into the deficit. And again, I encourage you to listen to that. But that's the same thing that we're looking at here with Glencore's assets. It's pie-in-the-sky. Uh, the price goes low enough, then those assets are worthless simply because the cost of pulling them out of the ground is more than what you can sell them for. They're not assets at all. So very easily, uh, Glencore could go to zero. So we're going to keep watching this one. Now, I wanted to get to the main story of the night, and that's going to be this issue of uh, Bix Weir covering this mint um conspiracy basically and uh if you remember bix is bix is kind of like ted butler he's always firing off letters to the government about what they're supposed to do now if you remember in the law about the silver eagle bix has mentioned two main points the first point 
was that the Mint was required by the original language of the Silver Eagle program to source domestic silver um, first. And I don't remember if it was only domestic silver. Of course, that's not going to be possible because for the last few years, the Eagles have been running, uh, the, the number, the break number was 50 million ounces. And uh, we started to go above that. Of course, the amount of silver being mined in the U.S. has been falling. Now, they went and changed the language in the law that uh, said that the Treasury Secretary, Jack Lew, is responsible to uh, source this domestically. And they put it to the discretion of uh, that uh, office. So they did make a change there. But they didn't make a change to this law. Uh, which states that the mint is required to produce sufficient quantities to meet public demand. So let's read this. I, I think that Bix is really right on this one. This is his letter to uh, the government. Dear sirs, it's come to my attention that your continual limits on the allocation of Silver Eagles since June 2015 is once again in violation of the American Silver Eagle Bullion Program, Title II of Public Law 9961, Liberty Coin Act, codified as 31 U.S.C. 5112, which requires that U.S. Silver Eagles be produced, quote, in quantities sufficient to meet public demand. Now, this is really important. This is going to be the key phrase that everything turns on. And what is assumed in this phrase is a relationship to price. Now it's not stated here, but as we read on we're going to see that Bix is arguing that to meet this qualification to get quantities sufficient to meet public demand, they should be required to bid higher for whatever blanks are there because if you remember in the past the argument was well, there's a shortage of blanks. And uh, uh, what Bix is arguing here is, no, there's not a shortage of blanks. You're not willing to bid for the blanks a higher price than foreigners are. So let's read this. The current limitation placed on U.S. Silver Eagles is not due to limited manufacturing capabilities of the U.S. Mint facilities, but rather due to a supposed shortage of silver planchets, blanks, coming from official suppliers to the U.S. Mint. This is not a true statement, and I demand that the U.S. Mint cease any limitation on Silver Eagle sales immediately and comply with the law. Proof of availability of stock was revealed in a recent article and interview with the CEO of the U.S. Mint's largest blank provider, the Sunshine Mint. And he gives the link. Sunshine Mint operating around the clock to meet silver demand. In this interview published in Coin World, the Sunshine Mint CEO Tom Power states that the Sunshine Mint will produce over 70 million ounces of silver products this year and that the U.S. Mint is not demanding or receiving 100% of this production. Quote, Sunshine Minting is the primary supplier of one ounce silver planchets to the United States Mint for the production of American Eagle Silver Bullions. Sunshine also provides silver planchets to other undisclosed world mints. Quote, the United States Mint doesn't get 100% of our capacity, Power said. In 2014, Sunshine Minting produced 70 million ounces of silver bullion products and is likely to eclipse that level in 2015, Power said. On the surface, the wide disbursement of Sunshine Mint's blank production may seem reasonable, but in reality, and in accordance with the law, the U.S. Mint is required to increase their bid for all silver blanks until they bid high enough to obtain enough blanks to meet public demand. This high bid requirement is across all other authorized suppliers of silver blanks to the U.S. Mint. It is the law. And the fact that the Sunshine Mint, being the largest supplier of blanks, is producing over twice the output needed by the U.S. Mint gives support to the theory that the U.S. Mint silver suppliers are illegally conspiring to distort the fair market value of silver. After all, 
according to conclusions in all three CFTC silver manipulation investigations, since the futures and options price of silver was equal to the physical price of silver, there was no manipulation. That is clearly no longer true as it is the artificially low silver prices today that has led to the current silver shortage. And this is not just a retail blank shortage. The Sunshine Mint reveals in this interview that the availability of COMEX 1000 ounce good delivery bars are also in a shortage. Quote, the plantains are not the only form of silver currently in short supply. There's been a shortage of 1000 ounce silver bars, Power said. With two of the most popular forms of silver bullion, one ounce silver blanks, and 1,000 ounce Comex silver bar bars in short supply, it is disingenuous at best for anyone to claim that there is no physical silver shortage. Now, we have direct proof that the price of Comex silver futures and options are not reflecting the price or supply availability of physical silver. It's once again time for the CFTC to open another silver manipulation investigation into the price suppression on the COMEX. Summary. Due to the requirements of U.S. Silver Eagle law, the U.S. Mint must produce coins in quantities sufficient to meet public demand, which puts the Mint in the unique position among all other buyers of silver blanks as being required to be the highest bidder for silver blank production when the global supplies of U.S. Silver Eagles are not meeting demand. By holding back the higher bids for physical silver, the U.S. Mint is participating in the price suppression that has distorted the supply-demand dynamics for a free market in silver, which has created the shortages of physical silver. The evidence is clear, and the U.S. Mint must end their violation of Public Law 9961 and increase their bids for silver blanks in order to produce the quantity of U.S. Silver Eagles required to meet public demand. It is disingenuous for our politicians and regulators to decry the widespread use of artificial market manipulation on the one hand and play a major role in supporting it on the other. Signed, a concerned citizen of the United States of America. And that's Big Square. So that is an excellent point. I can't agree with this more. The U.S. Mint is required by law to produce as many silver eagles as are demanded. The U.S. Mint has put their their um, buyers on allocation. That means they're rationing the silver eagles. But the fact that Sunshine Mint is not selling all of their silver to the U.S. Mint means that the Mint is not outbidding foreign buyers of those planchets. And I think Vix is right. By law, they're required to bid a higher price. Now, they used to argue something like, well, there just aren't enough blanks out there. And that's a legitimate argument. And they've also argued that, well, our uh, production facilities are going full capacity and we're trying to add capacity and do as much as we can. But that's not what's going on here. This is completely different. This is collusion by the U.S. Mint with the COMEX. They are colluding to suppress the price of silver and they are actually breaking the law. The U.S. Mint is breaking the law and that is absolute madness. I think this is in fact a smoking gun. That is proof that the mint is not interested in doing what they're told to do by law, but they're interested in supporting the silver suppression. Now, people might ask, well, what should they do? Well, it's very simple. They should go to Sunshine Mint and say, we want all of your blanks. And they will say, well, the Perth man or the Canadian man or someone else, they bid this for our blanks. And the U.S. Mint is required by law to say, okay, well, we'll top that bid. And uh, they should force a bidding war for those blanks. They should get 100% of those blanks, regardless of what they have to pay, regardless of what the COMEX says the price of silver is. If there are blanks available, they're required by law to bid whatever price they need to to get those. So I agree 100% with Bix Weir. I think he's correct. Uh, this this is a smoking gun. This is really important. So 
that's going to be a story we're going to watch play out. Now, Glencore is somewhat related to that. I've tried to explain the interlocking uh, mechanisms of the manipulation. Um, the base metals are something that they are trying to keep the price up. And the reason why they're trying to keep the price up is that if the price stays high on those base metals, they get more silver and gold as a byproduct. If the price of those base metals collapses, and it is collapsing because they've tried to manipulate the market, they've created a glut, and there's too much of it, and the, world, the world's economies led by China are slowing down. We saw the story just a day or so ago of Walmart and their profits are collapsing, their stock price collapsed. So we're in the front, uh, the front edge of a serious slowdown here. And uh, this copper price probably is going to make new lows. If it makes new lows, Glencore could go out of business. If Glencore goes out of business, pressure is going to be put on BHP Bulletin and Rio Tinto, the other two main ones. They're already, uh, one of the reasons why this manipulation failed was that uh, Glencore tried to do sort of a unannounced OPEC on the base metals and uh, BHP and Rio Tinto weren't going to go along. They're like, well, we're just going to keep mining it. So this is very interesting to see this happen at the same time. Uh, we're going to watch the story very closely. Bixweer has quite a bit of influence. He was the one who was harping on the, the sourcing of Silver Eagles from U.S. silver supply and they actually went in and changed the law. It will be very interesting if, because of this mint madness, their conspiracy uh, to suppress the prices, to cooperate in the suppression of the price of silver, if uh, this mint madness is reversed also by a change in the law. We'll wait and see, and we'll talk to you next time.